In this video, I'm going to show you the easiest way to grow mushrooms at home that is the most foolproof and noob friendly. It isn't necessarily the most automated or the highest yielding, but it's the easiest and most likely to result in success. This of course uses my sterilized grain bags which you will inoculate and allow to colonize. Once they're fully colonized, break them up again so that the grain is free flowing and then prepare your bulk substrate. Your bulk substrate can be anything from pure cocoa choir to the small uh, vermiculite or a mixture of the two. You can also use a combination of manure and straw, but since this is more for your first grow, I recommend just going with cocoa choir, vermiculite, or a mixture of the two. That's because it is the lowest risk of contamination while it's still fairly high yielding. Also you'll want to be using a high spawn ratio to bulk substrate. So all you have to do, and you don't have to do this under sterile procedures or anything, um, is get a plastic bin. I'm using a 64 quart bin. And what you'll do is open your fully colonized grain bags, add them to the bin, and then add your bulk substrate. Once you've added your bulk substrate, you will want to mix the grains thoroughly. Uh, I recommend mixing. You can layer, but I don't see any real benefit to that. So mix them together. You can use your bare hands. Uh, probably recommended to wash your hands off first, but again, this procedure doesn't need to be sterile, so you're fine to work in the open with your bare hands. So once you mix them together, flatten it down. You should want the substrate to be about four inches in depth, although you can get away with less. It's not recommended to go more because there's just really no benefit to that and per pound you're going to end up getting less yield of mushroom. So once it's mixed together and flattened down, all you have to do is place the lid on, close it up tight, and allow it to sit until it's fully white, fully colonized. This will take anywhere from one week to two weeks depending on a variety of factors. Once it is fully colonized, what you will want to do is take off the lid and shift it about half an inch to an inch and expose it to light. You will want to also ensure that you're misting the top of the lid and the edges of the container. It's okay if you also miss the substrate directly, but some people don't recommend it. Tap water is fine, although it might be better to use recently boiled water because it will re potentially remove some of the chlorine and kill any bacteria and spores that you might have got in the water. Though, again, it's not necessary. So. Once you've cracked the lid, misted it, and exposed it to light, that'll put it into fruiting conditions, and you should start to see and get mushrooms within a week to two weeks. Uh, you will have to mist it daily, and it is recommended that you close it at nighttime, but um, should work fine. It, cracking the lid and moving it sideways provides enough air ventilation and humidity that you don't need to really worry about it other than misting it a few times a day. This is not a monotub. It, is, it requires more work. A monotub is supposed to be a set it and forget it thing. It has polyfill holes in the sides which regulate airflow and humidity better and you know uh, that's one way to do it, it's more automated, but it's also harder to do. And if you're a first time grower, you're probably going to be looking at this every day and you're only doing one tote, so you don't need it automated. 
So that's all there is to it. Very simple. It's probably the easiest way. It's higher yielding than the PF Tech when you consider the amount of cost and work. This plastic tote only costs $7 at Walmart. It's clear, 64 quart, uh, 60 liter. And my grain bags, if you order two of them, including shipping, only costs uh, $16 to $17. The Cocoa Choir or the Vermiculite can be obtained relatively cheaply, probably less than $10. And you can get the Cocoa Choir at most pet stores in a brick. And you can get the Vermiculite at most garden centers as well as places like Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, one of the main important things to do uh, about the bulk substrate or the cocoa choir is to make sure it's properly hydrated. What that means is you want to soak it for 24 hours and then make sure it's at filled capacity. Filled capacity is where it doesn't drip water, but upon gently squeezing it, it releases a few drops. Then when you squeeze it tighter, it releases a small stream. This is to ensure that there's no sitting water in the container, which can yield uh, various problems, such as it going anaerobic and leading to contamination. Um, but also it ensures that it has the most water in the substrate itself, which is one of the biggest factors that determines yield. Cocoa Choir and Vermiculite are not that nutritious, if at all, and they're really just used for moisture content. So you really want to make sure that it's properly hydrated. Also, you'll want to make sure that it's been pasteurized. If you add boiling water to the Cocoa Choir and then drain, that's good enough. That'll be pasteurized, and same goes for the Vermiculite. So that's all there is to it. I really recommend this method to the noobs. And again, I'm not claiming that it's the highest yielding, although it is pretty high yielding, or the most automated, lowest labor. But what it is, is the most foolproof and the easiest to do. All right, now that I've talked about the procedure and overall, I'm going to mix them and just show you how it's done. So first off, I will be adding the pasteurized bulk substrate. I have cleaned this container. I've just rinsed it out and dried it out. So there is uh, five pounds of bulk substrate. And we're going to pretend that this is colonized grain spawn. It's not, but um, I don't have any on hand. So we're just going to do this as a demonstration. Now you can just mix it, preferably as evenly as possible. All right, and that's not quite four inches. Looks like it's closer to two. So I will add another five pound bag of pasteurized cocoa choir and vermiculite that has been hydrated properly, known as bulk substrate. And for good measure, for faster colonization rates and higher yields, I'm going to add a, another bag of sterilized grain. But there should be spawn. And again, I'm going to mix it as thoroughly as possible, having ensured that the spawn is broken up into mostly individual pieces of grain. But it is OK if it is uh, a little bit clumpy. You want the grain to be broken up so it provides as many inoculating points as possible. So 
Now that this is fully mixed in, I'm just going to flatten the surface, make sure everything is even, and I'm not going to press it down. You want it to still be a light, bulk, uh, a light fluffy substrate. So that looks about right. I don't know if that's quite four inches or too much. It's kind of hard to gauge, uh, but it's not that important to be that accurate. You can use as little as two inches or slightly more than four, but I think four is kind of the optimized amount. And then all you have to do is seal up the lid and allow this to colonize. It'll colonize very rapidly. You'll start to see growth within two days. All the little grain will turn into like fluffy cotton balls and they will merge together into this being one solid white mass of mycelium. And once that's done, all you have to do is crack open the lid, put it sideways, and start misting it. Uh, when I mist it, I make sure to really get the sides really well. You may not need to mist it right off the bat because it will have a lot of humidity from having the lid closed. Notice um, I'm using a small uh, mister. I, I prefer this because it produces a finer mist and I think that helps with humidity. So I'll do that with all the sides, the lid, and I'll just make sure everything, all the surfaces are really, really wet. I'd probably do it more if this were not a video, but that's all it takes. Make sure it has light. Mist it a few times a day, and mushrooms should start to grow. It, it's really that simple. Everyone always overcomplicates it with monotubs requiring polyfill or making shotgun fruiting chambers for PF tech, but there's no need for that complexity when this is a fairly high yielding, low labor, fairly cheap uh, process. It, it's, it's really hard to beat, especially when it comes to your first grow. And again, just go with a simple substrate. You don't want to have straw and manure because it really doesn't increase the yield that much, but it increases the labor, the preparation, the cost, and the risk of contamination more than just using coca choir, vermiculite, or a mixture of the two. That, that's all there is to it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or comment below. Uh, I sell my sterilized grain on Etsy as well as a few other places. I will also link that in the description below. And I, I think that's everything. I can't imagine, can't think of anything that I've missed. So yeah, that's all there is to it. And let me know how your grows go. I would like to see some pictures of this process using my product. Um, yeah, that's it. All right. Thank you.